everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. One key thing to watch today will be the battle in the trenches. The Browns have the best rush defense in the league, and they're going up against the Ravens, who will try to avoid becoming one-dimensional. With that, we'll send it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. They've got the call in this week five match. Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. Today, we've got a good Week 5 matchup in store here between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. It's been all systems go in this first month. They're off to a 4-0 start. And it's got folks believing that this is a team that's built to go all the way. You can't win the Super Bowl in September, but they're telling everyone that they're going to be there in the end. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. And the way they played last week defensively, you look at the tape, it looks like they had extra guys on the field, and they thoroughly shut down that offense. The first quarter of the season already in the rearview mirror, and off we go in week five on EA Sports. That's fielded in the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So now the Ravens getting ready for their first go on offense. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. to him right up the gun and he'll fight forward to about the 27 yard line two yards on the carry there it'll be second down the wide receivers often a very very talented group and that's the case here and they don't mind showcasing it either those guys love to be flashy love to make big plays out in the open field they will attempt to do so in this game here he lost two there and it's third down I can't help it I'm just sitting back in admiration right now this defense tells everyone that plays against them you're not beating us running the football that's who we are that's what we're about it's not going to happen if you're going to beat us you better pick another way back to throw he's got time nowhere to escape and he goes down it'll be a loss of eight on the sack and it's going to lead him to fourth down and we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. The Ravens send their punter out now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. That's pulled in at the 32. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And a glance here at the vet. He's got a lot of years under his belt in the National Football League. Throwing here on first down. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. And there they bring pressure from the inside, and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. And now the offense will look to respond after the sack. Four down, four down. Check, check. Come on, let's go. Now they'll 
he'll throw here out of the gun. Going right side here, and that's complete. Oh, he will not go down. Have to retake those ankles. A big play that time for Cleveland. 48 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. Incomplete. Holding offense. Yeah, that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down, if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Give him 16 yards on the play, and that'll bring up a second and goal. Really tough drive, but that run help salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back, and now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Second and goal from the two-yard line, and they'll run it here. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. And here's a look at the starting offense. From the three-yard line once more. Now here's third and goal. Come on, let's go! What? Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns have taken the early lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Extra point forthcoming. It's up and through to make it 7 nothing Browns. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called, and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Just one yard to go here on second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Smart approach there, using the run to pick up the first. And that was a defensive setup they prepared for this week, knowing that keeping it on the ground was the best way to attack it. And that means also that they're able to read them pretty well. All the things they prepared for when they get to the line of scrimmage, they see it in pre-snap recognition and know exactly how to attack based on their planning and preparation. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll take this one for about four up to the 40. And the big meet on the D-line, we'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Now 
They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner, and the tackle was there right away for a loss of yardage. So the offense dealing with a third and six. They'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. He could not get away that time, and it'll be a loss of 11 on third down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fielded at the 20. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. That's what love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Now a handoff here to his running back. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. It's really simple to say that they know their identity, that they are a passing team. But one of the reasons that they're so successful, they know how to mix in the run and make sure that they keep the defense off balance and not able to just simply say, let's go get the quarterback and disrupt things. Now they'll switch it up here. Rush coming, and he's taken down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. So third and 15 and an extra defensive back in the game now. Flooding the passing lanes. They'll set up a throw. This is caught inside the 15. A big play that time for Cleveland. And even 40 yards. 
there will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. They'll come out in the pistol. And they'll go on the ground. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Partner, when it's a goal-to-go situation, if you're on the field on defense, you have to know that you may be called on to make a tackle at any time. Here, the cornerback does exactly that. Plays the run really well and makes a big play. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And let's see six defensive banks out there. They're in the dime here on third and goal. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Charles, that's an important third down stop. You don't want to spot him two touchdowns here early. You're trying to slow momentum down. You've already given up the score. They're coming right back at you. You're exactly right. Being able to hold them there and force a decision on fourth down, that's big for the defense. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if somebody got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Some runs are blocked so well. You almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. It's a loss of two, now third down. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result. Because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move, to influence the defensive front, to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him, sat there waiting for him and made the play. And it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Now they try the right side here. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. At the end of one, 10 zip hour score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They face a second and seven to start things out. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll lead here to a third down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. They're going to look to throw, and he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. 
But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Yeah, he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. A chance for us to look at this Baltimore defense again. And last time out, they gave up the chip shot field goal, but obviously could have been worse than that. I think they felt pretty good about only giving up three. No doubt about it. Anytime an offense gets into the red zone, the thinking naturally for the defense is, okay, three points. We're going to give up three here, but let's make it no more than that. They met their goal. On the other side, though, the offense, they weren't very happy. No, because there's an opportunity. Once you get to the red zone, you're not thinking about kicking a field goal. You're thinking about how do you get into the end zone, and when you don't, you walk off the field feeling a little bit of failure on that drive. Yeah, who will have the better feeling at the end of this drive? That was a nice play by the defense, but the offense can't let that one play define them. Let it go, move on, and start over again. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. Come on, let's go! They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. Now back to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And now a high kick trying to pin him back. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. We get a glance at the Browns' defense as they file into position. They did their job last go-around, forced the punt, hoping for more of that here. They got off the field. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Get off the field, turn the ball over to their offense, and kick back and enjoy a little bit of... Water and rest before they have to go back out there again. Back out there now, hoping to hurry up and get more water and rest. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. the gun. They'll look to throw. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. That was a nicely run slant route and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's go ahead and try and get into the body and the mind of the linebackers. Yeah, I know they're bigger and stronger than I ever was, but in this situation, they understood what was going on as much as the offensive guys. Because the offense guys always taught, find the first down sticks and make the play. On defense, what do you want to do? Guard the first down line. Make sure they don't get there and tackle them in front. They were able to drop in their zone coverage figure out where the first down line was, and end up making the play, swatting it away so they couldn't get the completion. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Ravens' defense now as they get ready for the next possession. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, 
you feel like you're in control Stop now. Him. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Oh, Will it continue? We'll see. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll give it to him right up the gut. Oh, look at the juke. And he's got room. And a cut to the sideline. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big play that time for Cleveland. 66 yards on the ground. He went over 100 yards a week ago, and with that run, he does it again. He's an absolute horse, a guy that eats carries. And what I mean by that, the more you hand it to him, the more the production you're going to get. A big-time performer. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. He'll drop to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big-bodied receiver with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Now the try here for the point after. He's got it, and it's 17-0. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken about the 12. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, they told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Now a play fake here on into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown, and pick it off, just as we saw there. Surveying the field. Great protection. He's got a rifle on deep left side. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times. Tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. Back to throw now on second and 10. He's going to go up top. This is caught inside the 15. 
And that one results in 35 yards. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position, now more than ever, is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Oftentimes when a guy has a game like this, he's going to take his offensive line out to dinner afterwards. But after a play like that, he may tell them, instead of getting the steaks, guys, we might have to go for the hot dogs. Out of the gun now on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And his kick is good. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time, one play interception, so this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Got to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. But there's another example of why they haven't scored any points so far. I think it's time to abandon the run game, spread things out, and go to the air. It certainly can't be any worse than what they've done so far. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Third and 11, five in the secondary now. Nickel look. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. The Ravens send their punter out now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at about the 14. A great return there of 22 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's been in a pretty good group. They actually have more yards on the ground than through the air, but both have been good, pretty balanced. And have we ever met a coach when we've talked to him before a game that hasn't mentioned wanting to be balanced? No, because then you've got both sides hitting the defense. They don't know what to expect, right? It really helps your play calling because now you're in a position where you're confident in either one, either aspect of the game. Dial it up and let it go. And so far, that's allowed them to lead. Absolutely. Have the lead here in the second quarter. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, second down. But it was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. And he's got his man on the out route. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Two minutes to go here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a feeling those highlights will be pretty one-sided, too. I think you're right, partner. Let's go! On first down, he'll drop to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. The speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And he will find his man on the outside. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're... Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. 
Their big tight end, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns add six to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. And that stretches the lead to 27. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now the Browns' defensive unit trots back out. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And the defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying to keep it short here. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. No, oh, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. The name of the game is always on defense, put pressure on the quarterback. And that's exactly what they've done today. It looks like they've got him a little bit rattled. That would have been the second interception in the first half. Here we go. Again, he'll drop to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. A big play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Ravens cut into that lead. Yeah, yeah, you heard it, right? <laughs> exhale. Yeah, the exhale. And I'm taking that from their bench because finally, right before the half, they find a way to get the ball in the end zone and get, get some points on the board. Maybe they can use that to kickstart them for the second half. Yeah, just to get something before going into the lockers. And now in the second half, if they can just tighten. That's what they want to do. Tighten down everything they're doing and then maybe explode at the right time. Just a four-play drive that time. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Here's the kick unit now for the Ravens as they'll send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. 
So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. And he comes back with one complete. The 20, 10. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Seconds of the first half, and the Browns add on to their lead. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook, but even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff, because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. And that stretches the lead to 27. A drive there of just four plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken about the 12. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. They'll throw now on the final play. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to loft one deep left side here. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And he will be brought down as time is now run out on this first half of action. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Browns are just destroying the will of the defense with the way they've been running the football. The Ravens will need to buckle down and slow down that run game to get back in this one. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. Pick it up early in the first. Pass will be completed out of the gun and he'll end up picking up 48 yards on the play. Browns now later on the drive. Coverage breaks down here, and it's caught for the score. Browns strike first in this one. Midway through the first quarter, defense will win the battle and get the sack. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Lined up at the 43, the pass complete out of the gun. And he goes in for the score, trailing now by 20. So that'll do it for us here in Orlando. 